You are welcome back to Development Focus with Gideon Joe on ITV. Need I tell you that this program is open for sponsorship and advert placement. Um, so you can do business with us if you are really enjoying us and you want us to keep going. Well, uh, for this second and concluding segment, we will be discussing the budget, the federal government budget for 2022. Once again, uh, three months to the end of the year, the president on October 7, uh, just a week into this new month, uh, submitted a budget of over 16 trillion naira. And now many Nigerians have mixed reactions. Uh, some felt it's, it's good. Our budget deficit, uh, the debt servicing portfolio, uh, some of the snippets of what has come out. Uh, what the president wants to spend to travel, uh, welfare, and all of that. Some are criticizing, some are saying, well, it's, uh, governance is expensive. Well, I brought uh, one I believe can do s justice to this issue, and that is a renowned uh, news analyst and a columnist, uh, Malam. You are welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure guys. to be here too. Um, so, uh, you you possibly have read or listened to the president's budget speech. What's your overall impression of that budget? Okay, I, I think the president is uh, is trying to make sure that he leaves a, a, leg, a lasting legacy in mm. office. He said he doesn't want to live as a failure. As a failure. So, I, so this is... Yes. And he said the budget is budget of hope and... Uh, is it budget of hope and restoration or something? It was, exactly. It was made somehow. Somehow. And you can see that in, in trying to achieve, you know, what he has set out to achieve by completing all these projects, he has deliberately or should I say he has been deliberate in presenting the budget early. I think it beginning from last year. Yeah, yeah. Quite yeah. early, so that um, the National Assembly that is dominated by his party can easily, you know, work on it, pass it into law and begin the implementation. So to that extent, we can say, yes, it's quite commendable. He's trying to, as much as possible, comply with the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which says you should, yeah. should submit your budget uh, at least by September. Yeah. September, yes. Yeah. So and that was the initial promise. Exactly. But uh, the National Assembly came back from their annual recess, yes. middle of September. So to that extent, we can say, yes, it means somebody has been working on uh, our fiscal plan, you know, while the rest of us were actually waiting for implementation of the previous fiscal plan. So, uh, now on the issue on the budget itself, <laughs> it's a bit. Um, should I say? Yes, why the president is trying to do his best, but I think he missed out some fundamentals mm. uh, in the last six years of his administration. So, so what are I, those fundamentals he missed? Out? Okay, first and foremost, the previous topic you discussed is something that. Uh, a president that was elected on the basis of change, a president that actually defeated an incumbent. Mm. Who made history? Who made history? I mean, I was one of those who, you know, participated actively in that election, and I can tell you that President Mohamed Bari was voting, was voted in as president for free. Mm. Mm. Nobody collected money to vote for President Mohamed Bari. In fact, people donated to his campaign. Yeah, yeah. So it tells you that Nigerians want good governance, and when they say a a prospective candidate that they think can deliver, they will go all out and support such a candidate. So we're not as irredeemably corrupt as some people mm. think we are. Why did I give this background, sir? If you look at the budget, you have a budget deficit of six trillion, even though the budget is about sixteen trillion. Yeah. What a six trillion budget, uh, budget deficit waiting to be taken care of by more borrowings. Yeah. And. We are benchmarking this budget on $57 crude price, mm. which is a bit realistic because given the current uh, price of... 1.8 million barrels of... Uh, that, uh, that itself is may not be altogether realistic, but okay, tying it together, mm. it is a fair... It's a fair... Do, do you agree with the, with the exchange rate? 
the exchange rate. Uh, 70, something like that. Uh, exactly, that is another challenge. Because I don't think that exchange is realistic. Is realistic. Because even Even the free fall of Naira as a result of the devaluation of the heavy... I will tell you that uh, banks pressure. sometimes source for Forex for their own use from the parallel market. For their own use? Yes. Banks? Banks. Will go <laughs> to the parallel market. So Instead of CBS. Of CBS. So, mm. why do we have this problem? Revenue crunch. Mm. Nigeria's revenue profile is one of the lowest in the world. Mm. Yes. And people are really concerned about the issue of borrowing and the issue of the ability to pay back. And I'm saying, yes, these concerns are germane. Even though the government will tell you that we oh, have a lot of latitude to borrow, that our debt to GDP is low, mm. uh, but our revenue to GDP is one of the lowest in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, 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 Malam, it's not even, uh, I agree with you on the revenue to GDP, but from what we learned, for Every hundred we receive the revenue, we are spending as much as hundred percent of it <laughs> on to service, service debt. debt servicing. And so, uh, and the debt servicing portfolio in this budget is three point uh, three point one trillion. That is in addition to the projected deficit. Yes. What are we going to spend to service previous debt? To is, service the previous debt is now in excess I, of I, three I want trillion. To, I want to borrow six, six trillion. trillion. So it means we are borrowing to service debt in a sense. So maybe at the end of 2022, our debt servicing portfolio we will have gotten to close to four trillion. Four trillion. So it's not looking very good. And and this is not paying the principal. No, no, it's just it's not servicing, servicing the debt. And if you look at our revenue, our revenue is our revenue to GDP is eight percent. Even the president admitted that and pledged to grow it to at least fifteen percent by 2025. When he will no longer be in government. Meaning he's being, he has to do a lot of things now to make sure that is realized by 2025. No, because there will be a change of government in 2023. So that means he, he, he will not be able to influence his successor, even if he's from P APC. No, we are saying he has to do a lot in no. two years. Okay. okay. That will okay. make it irreversible for his successor, whether APC or not, mm -hmm. to reverse you know, some of his policies. Now, the, the, the global average of GDP to revenue is almost 30 percent. So when Nigerians tell you, well, some Nigerians tell you that, okay, no, it's not bad to borrow. Some other countries will look up to actually borrow to, to finance their budget and uh, they have even a higher ratio of GDP to mm. debt. One thing they forget to realize is that their GDP generates more revenue. The activities, the Sectoral distribution of the yeah, GDP. The, 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 the economy. That's yeah. because the economy is export competitive. So that brings to the first question, the first issue of trying to talk about the issue of national cohesion mm. and why we are where, why we are where we are today. We need that. Let, let's speak this call. Whether this. <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Good morning. What's your name? Yes, Where are you calling us from? Yes, Uh, yeah, I'm calling on uh, marriage matter. You are calling the wrong, wrong number, please. Wrong number. This is not marriage uh, <laughs> counseling. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's part of the interactive <laughs> yeah, yeah, program. Yeah, we, we want to just get people to win. Exactly. So. Now, the truth is, when this government came on board in 2015, that's something they should have realized. Mm. They should have realized that one for so long, for many years before 2015, Nigeria has been going in, going around in circles. Mm. Motion without movement. Without movement. And why is that? National cohesion, national unity, nurtured by social justice, equity, and fairness. Mm. It's a condition preceding any form of social economic development of any country, nation, or geographic entity. That's it. So what half size is this? Because all of this is lacking in Nigeria. Nigeria is not a nation in the real sense of the word. Sixty one years after mm. we are still discussing the issue of national cohesion. And we are not getting it right in terms of national cohesion. So it that's what that survey reports us. Exactly. No, it's clear. I mean we're Nigerians. Mm. And so, 
what the Buhari administration should have undertaken as a first step towards social economic development to prevent the crisis of today and to correct the problems of yesterday that it inherited was to have embarked on a concerted effort of national unity. Mm. Because what you have, sir, is this. Nigeria is a country of multi-ethnic nationalities. Yeah, over 250. Are you saying 200? Uh, over 200. I mean, three. Uh, Vanguard newspaper did a, a report in 2017 that Nigerians uh, 371 tribes and still counting and still counting. because new identities I imagine depend on the political situation of the, of the country yeah. at any point in time now why am I making this analysis sir? it will seem that all of us as Nigerians are competing amongst ourselves for the control of Nigeria's main source of revenue which is crude oil sales mm. So rather than uniting as a country to compete with other countries for global resources, Nigerians are divided among themselves over mm. stiff competition, mortal combat for that matter, over Nigerians' main source of revenue, which is crude oil sales. So, so let, let's break down this issue of budget. Yes. There are, there, I mean, let's look at the positives. And I have a couple of them I want you to react to. Uh, let's do away with the statistics. Um, yes. Uh, we know what our uh, our the ratio of recurring to capital is still low. Uh, I think our our capital is still about thirty percent. Recurring expenditure seventy percent. But there are snippets of what is coming out. What the president intends to use for travel. Somebody actually referred to this budget as. Uh, Exploitative and extra, um, extortionary. Extortionary. <laughs> uh, there was this was he, he used. I don't know what your own perception is. Uh, cost of governance. Yes. Let's bring it to the ordinary citizen. Cost of governance, as reflected in this budget, is it reducing or increasing? If it's increasing, is it justifiably increasing? Mm -hmm. Now, it is not reducing, it is increasing. Is it justifiable? Of course, no. But I'm trying to analyze the reason why it is so. Mm. So that we need to set an agenda for the next administration that is coming in. Otherwise, we'll be having the conversation four years after, mm. ex discussing the same issue. Arising from that struggle by the constant peoples of Nigeria over our common resources, those who champion the struggle on behalf of our different sections are the ones in government. Mm. and have an affirmative action eh, about how to control these resources and so they take a large chunk for themselves first mm. that is what you see reflected in and the, the high cost, cost of, of governance mm. a governance structure that is not productive but it's it's, it's consumed it's, 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 it's given so much on travels and it because so it much is structured on Russia, on, it is structured uh, around elite consumption exactly so they are consuming it on our behalf and so we are fighting. We want a southern president. We want a northern president. We want a southeastern senate president. We want all of these positions. So this will get in there and on our behalf, yeah, they sit yeah. on the dining table and share the national cake. Mm. So there is no governance basically. It's only politics of who gets what when, when and how. Out of these two body cells, based on ethnicity, religion, and geography of origin. So what that, what has that done to us? Nigeria is not competitive with the international arena. Because uh, but, but we aim to be one of the biggest economies in 2020. No, it can happen because... We, we, we have even passed 2020 exactly. and 2021. You see, it can happen because your, the economy, the other sectors of your economy, are not export competitive. They are all feasting on a mono source of revenue. Monoculture mm. economy. That is all. So your banking sector, your financial services sector, your, your housing sector, your manufacturing sector, your agricultural sector is all dependent on spending out of Cuba itself. Let, 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 let me bring you to one of the key issues. This government has earmarked money for census in 2022. What, what's your take on that? Now, yes, it is important to have data. I mean, without data, you can't plan. Now, but the problem is the process of obtaining this data is usually politically motivated rather than dictated by economic common sense. So at the end of the day, you could spend all of these monies to do your census to know 
the number of people in your country. But if it is fraudulently done, as, as, as we've seen in the past, mm. it will bring a data that is not realistic, that is not practicable, that is not... There will be challenged. There will be challenged. So the money that will be wasted on the procurement processes around surrounding this whole process without achieving the results. And the issue of census, ordinarily, if Nigeria was configured properly as a united and cohesive nation, you don't even need to do this annual ritual of... Uh, sensors every 10 years you can actually obtain data from a continuous biometric process yeah of debt of update. recording debt and uh, debt how many people file records of their death because and, and we are not functioning as a nation so mm -hmm. we, we we throw money at problems and we don't get the results so we are saying today that nigeria is heavily indebted to the point that we are spending almost everything we earn to service debt and government is thinking, for example, <laughs> of raising taxes, of borrowing to finance deficit, and raising taxes to grow our revenue. So it tells you that people are not thinking, those in authority, that's why being patronized by the chunk of budget that talks about their vehicles, their travels, their feeding in billions of naira. These monies are not getting them to think. They're not, it's not giving them enough comfort and motivation to think us out of the box. Are you sure they are not over pampered? To it be could be. It could work. also be a possibility <laughs> because somebody <laughs> simply. If you, are not, if you are not suffering, your thinking will be. They will say, "Don't become hypertensive. You can't exactly. change the situation." So exactly. So just because leave, just that, that, that's momentary bliss they enjoy while they enjoy. Yes. So they do not think that there's a life after government. Mm. And for those who are in government, they should understand that, look, your most lasting legacy will be good governance structures to put in place. You are going to be a beneficiary yourself and your children. Uh, and if you institute any monstrous system in government, you are going to be a victim as well. Once you are outside the protection of government, it's eight years maximum for executive positions. Sure. And so it is in their own enlightened interest to do the needful at every point in time towards making Nigeria a better place for all of us. Majid, point blank, is there no alternative to borrow? There is an alternative. Be because now we, we want to, we, we are running in this 2022 budget is going to be 6 trillion deficit. Yes. To finance 2021, we have borrowed, we are we just still, um, I think they, they approved the borrowing plan of last month. Uh, to borrow additional sum, and the president has said, "Look, we will continue to borrow because our debt to GDP is still within a reasonable limit." But an analysts have argued that there are alternatives. The alternatives. That, that, I mean, let, let me hear you first before I throw this in. But there's there's something most people are pointing in the direction to to government to so say, "Why don't you look at this?" Uh, uh, area, but what are your alternatives to Thank borrowing? You. There, there's an alternative to both borrowing and taxation. Okay, so what are they? Government has to start doing business. Like what? Running enterprises. But they've started with PIA. Petroleum industry. No, there's no They've registered. No, no. They no, registered general no, of uh, no, CAC. No, no. no, no. no, no. no, no. You can, cannot run a business like NNPC and you register it and you appoint. And if I are Romeo as a chairman of the board, uh, what about him? He's a career politician, a serial <laughs> contester for <laughs> any any election possible senator. But but but, but we, we are the ones saying Southeasterners are not well. No, you can bring a Southeasterner that is a technocrat, is a businessman, somebody who has the capacity to manage businesses efficiently. That is how government should do business. Mm. That will instill confidence in both investors. And the general public like, okay, MNPC is ready for business. So we say government should do business. It doesn't just mean establishing enterprises, but running them in line with international best practices, with efficiency, prudency, and all form of seriousness that will generate profit. I'm saying this because for more than 20 years now, we have swallowed this Washington consensus spill. No, fair. There's, no, there's no business. No, no, no. Government does not have business the in government business. Government has business in business. Mm. And the only business of government is doing business. Governments all over the world do business. All over the world, from America to Britain to China. So, so to what South business Africa, do you business. think we can do to uh, obviate the need to borrow money? Thank to you, very, thank you very much. 
we must start first by reforming the public service oh. to bring it in consonance in compliance with a business oriented government that is starting point it doesn't cost you money to do that mm. you must also start by cutting waste cutting all forms of bogus spending on maintenance of government uh, bureaucracy just to mm. cut that down secondly we have a federating a federation of 36 states we must see state governments actively it's when, when the APC goes to the next meeting they should go and discuss the business of economies of the states mm. their agenda for the states we want to see an integrated national master plan for economic development that will make Nigeria export competitive as so one cannot come in and intervene in critical areas where they need to invest monies for the purpose of earning revenue from export of such goods and services. Mm. Let me give you a classic example. Nigeria borrows a lot from China recently. Yeah. But China is the world's largest businessman. And China is 1.3 billion in population. Nigeria is 200. And that is billion. why the Chinese government knew that they cannot have entrepreneurial capitalism alone, like you have in the West. Because they, 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 they had it in mind that the government needed to be there to provide some level of social safety net so that the revenues derived from building activities can be channeled back to take care of this large population in terms of their welfare and security. Now, in the case of Nigeria, governments must rethink that philosophy. Mm. And in deep business, women must roll up its sleeves. You cannot afford to have a government that is buying vehicles at the rate in this budget. If the government was indeed doing business, the government was very frugal. If that our president to be using second hand cars because that is what is realistic mm. within his revenues. I, I, think, I think in this, in the, that you talked about reducing the cost of governance. I think uh, in this uh, budget, uh, about 10 billion was the amount for travels uh, for president, uh, his vice, and. Uh, uh, that is because the government is not doing business. A government is disindebted with acute revenue crunch. We think of budgeting this huge sum for travels. So, because so you can look at these things through technology nowadays. Uh, for the so meetings you want to have anywhere, can no, we but, but we've been having virtual meetings. Uh, set meetings. Yes. And even last year. So you don't need to travel this uh, much. So, in the, in so today's so world. Why would you have even uh, one billion for, 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 for that, travel? That, that budget you see is an official corruption document. It's like. Black corruption is no good legal. Let's take this cover. Through legislation. Oh, uh, we lost that. Through legislation. Okay. So, so uh, it's a legitimized robbery. Yes, that's what, 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 what it is. What you do. Because it gives a function of, you see, that same struggle for. We, we, don't, know, we don't know the party party of so the conspiracy project. Exactly. So, you see, no gross, no gross budgetary provisions in, in this that is simply aimed at getting that money for a few friends and families of people in government. And I'm saying it's no longer sustainable for both they and us. And, and people are saying this, uh, Majid. People are saying this 2022 budget is for 2023 election. No, it is, is from this that the government will fund. Uh, because the fund legally and illegally. Let me tell you something. In the, in the media, <laughs> in the media, we have, we have normalized this issue of government or people in the governors, presidents, fund election with public money. We have, we have made it look like it's a normal thing. It is abnormal. It, is, it happens nowhere in a real democracy. It is executive banditry to go into the treasury. Executive banditry. And bring that like money that. to prosecute electoral banditry. Mm. It is not done anywhere. Governors should not, nobody in government should touch one penny, one cobo to fund elections. But of course, that's what you have because you know why? Nigeria's political process is underlined by identity politics of ethnicity and religion. And the only reward system for identity politics is patronage. And so in Nigeria corruption is actually normalized by culture. Legalized. It's and legalized, it's normalized, it's sanctified by religion. It is even rationalized by intellectuals. And it's affirmed in politics. So you see it, this is the reason why we are we are why we are where we are today. So Nigeria is going to be managed as a real nation state. It, it brings to go back to the issue of national Indian cohesion. That is that should have been the starting point for a turnaround of the Nigerian state. Mm. Any country you see today, from Saudi Arabia to China to the United Arab Emirates, America to Britain, has made any form of progress, socioeconomic progress. It was because they first achieved national cohesion to a large extent. 
resolution of maternal identity and have what you call identity resonance by harmonizing their disparate or what you call identity dissonance. Mm. Nigeria has not been able to do this. We had expected this president to have started by putting in place a process of solid nation building. Okay. But unfortunately, he actually did the reverse. Okay, so um, you didn't mention this. That's why I would throw the question at you. Um, recently in 18, Nigeria Strategic, uh, Nigeria Strategic Industry Transparency Initiative uh, came out to say about 2.6 trillion revenue that should have been accrued to the coffers of this government were not remitted by international oil companies. But the question is, who, whose responsibility was it to have made sure that these monies were remitted? So, so I'm asking, the president is the Minister of uh, Petroleum Resources. He has a Minister of State for Petroleum yes. Resources. There is an NPC. There is joint venture, whatever, whatever exactly. that they do. So, people are holding you over 2 trillion, mm. 2.6 trillion all the meter revenue yeah. that is just for oil company we also have the issue with mpa nigeria port authority uh under Adiza, Adiza. Bale, Bale Osma, who was actually suspended was it early this year or last year for non-remittance of 165 billion or thereabout and several other non-remittance of stamp duty collection of vat collection trillions if we are able to get all the relevant operators to remit all this money, do you think we will still have to go to China, to World Bank, to IMF, or uh, AFDP to borrow money to fund our project? Uh, this is the same reason why you are doing, we are going all over the world looking for money. It's the same reason why you are not able to collect what is due to you. Because this is money due to you. Uh, but somebody, somebody is owing you. Uh, but somebody has somebody. And, 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 and it's within your reach. To even forfeit it, to 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 impound or to to uh, is it that's the right word to impound, sanction or impound, to sanction the defaulters. Uh, the defaulters. Uncle Jude, somebody that was responsible for collecting this money on behalf of you and I must have compromised. It must have been paid. It must have been gratified by those that are supposed to remit this money. So you can you and I can call nobody better from now till the kingdom come. Not to happen because those you are actually shouting to to do the needful know that they have done the needful long ago for mm. themselves. So, so the books are reading that you are hoeing, but nobody is really uh, because, because, because that person knows that first collection. something has, has happened, something has passed under the table. Uh, well, so it, it, it brings <laughs> us back to the issue of this mortal mm -hmm. combat for the national key. So, wow. where, where you find yourself, even in EFCC, if you are in EFCC. You are to prof you are supposed to profit from your position as EFCC chairman uh -uh. or staff, even the one corruption. <laughs> the the agency has been also uh, somebody there is you, know, you know this issue of uh, EFCC you brought in. Somebody is saying all the seizures and all the money recovered asset shouldn't it have been for I mean particularly those that they found out for future. Has been uh, the the court has granted final forfeiture like the Francis Atuches, uh, nineteen point six billion that was uh, forfeited in September. The monies recovered from several other individuals, assets, buildings. And there's any Alice Madukwe's jewelry alone was fourteen billion worth and eighty million worth of houses. And all of this money, how much is the president borrowing uh, this last uh, request? 50 million US dollars, I think. That's what he wanted to borrow. Or is it 500 million that he wanted to borrow uh, from multilateral agencies? Uh, this one that he submitted in uh, August or September. But here, uh, EFCC have seized a lot of assets. Some, they have gotten final for future order. Why can't we auction off? All of this, <laughs> the 14 billion hour worth of jewelry of Alice Madweke and several other seizures, including cash. Why can't we use it to fund our budget? The thing is, the government made so much noise about one corruption through assets for future seizure and sale to recover looted funds. 
But in reality, you cannot recover looted funds completely in the same amount that it was looted in the first place. Mm. So the strategy of the fact would have been to prevent further looting of the treasury. The question is, has anything changed in the way public finances have been managed in Nigeria between the last administration and the current administration? I do not think so. In fact, if you ask me, I will tell you that corruption has actually grown wings in Nigeria and it's flying so high and probably and nobody's even able to actually bring it down anymore. So, so, this would have been a far-fetched situation because even in the process of recovery for future and sale, corruption raises ugly head in the process, which at the end of the day should change the public treasury of monies that they're supposed to actually get. Now, I want to take you back to a very important issue so that the viewers will not miss out on this point. You asked me about the alternative to Bolo and I said doing business. Saudi Aramco is the world, one of the world's largest oil companies. It is a state-owned company. That company owns the largest refinery in the U.S., meaning it makes money from within the U.S. It has a revenue profile of over $80 billion per annum, hmm. that company alone. Because it has operations all over the world, including And they said there is no, the government does not have business. It's a state-owned. But the China, state that is your major uh, creditor today, China, that you go to, to for loans, isn't it, to finance infrastructure. All Chinese businesses offshore are state-owned businesses. All. Mm. Including their bakeries, their hotels, as small as water, water bottling companies has state funding. State. And so the money they make from you, because of their state-funded uh, companies, it's only a fraction of it that they give to you back as well. So the money that China is bringing to Nigeria, they make it from Nigeria and then borrow it a little back to you. Okay, it, it can be frustrating, but that would be the size of a uh, um, second um, final uh, discussion segment. I want to thank you, Mala uh, Dairu. Thank you very thank much it for coming on this show. Uh, we will not give up on Nigeria. Of course, we will. Uh, <laughs> we will always be there to shine the light, beam the light, and ask our leaders to do the right thing. Uh, please do join us next Wednesday when we will have a fresh edition of Development Focus with Didi Oju. Once again, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. And enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe.